Turbidity. This video will show the proper method for collecting water samples and conducting a test to determine the turbidity of a water body. For this test, you will need two turbidity columns, code 0835, standard turbidity reagent, code 7520-H, and a stirring rod. Locate the turbidity columns in your kit. If you are using your own kit, we recommend labeling one of the turbidity columns with an S for sample and the other with a C for control or a T for tap water. Rinse the S column three times with sample water from the water body. Then fill the column completely. Flick out excess water until the bottom of the meniscus is at the 50 milliliter line with sample water. Place the S column on a level surface, like in the center of your kit. Position yourself so that you can look down into the column through the opening, preferably from a distance of only about 6 inches. You should see a black dot on the bottom of the column. If the black dot on the bottom of the column is not visible when looking down through the column, find the clear stirring rod and stir the water sample in the column. Flick out excess water until the bottom of the meniscus is at the 25 milliliter line with your water sample. Look down into the column to find if, with that sample volume, you can see the black dot on the bottom of the column. When successfully seeing the black dot on the S column, rinse three times your second column, the one labeled C for control or T for tap water. Fill the second turbidity column with the same amount of bottled, distilled, or tap water. Place the columns side by side with the column bases almost touching. Make sure that they are on a level surface, like in the center of your kit. Position yourself so that you can look down into the columns through the openings, preferably from a distance of about 6 inches. This time, you should see a black dot on the bottom of both columns. For this test, you will be comparing the clarity or the fuzziness of the black dots in the bottom of the two columns. Do not consider the color of the water. Typically, the tap water in the T column will be clearer than the sample water. Therefore, the dot at the bottom of the T column will appear clearer, sharper, with less fuzziness. We will determine the turbidity of our sample water in the Jackson turbidity units by counting how many additions of standard turbidity it takes to make the tap water have the same level of turbidity as the sample water. To start, find the standard turbidity reagent and the dropper that is marked at the 0.5 milliliter line. Shake the reagent vigorously and then fill the dropper with 0.5 ml of the reagent. To do so, hold the dropper vertically, squeeze the bulb and then insert the dropper into the reagent bottle and release the bulb. The dropper should fill with no air bubbles. If air bubbles get into the dropper, squeeze the bulb to empty the dropper and refill it. Hold the dropper at eye level and carefully squeeze the bulb and expel excess reagent to the desired sample volume marked 0.5 ml. Find the clear stirring rod and stir both columns. Tap off excess water between columns to prevent contamination. We recommend that you hold onto the foot of each column when stirring to prevent spills. Look down at the black dots at the bottom of the columns. If the T column is clearer than the S column, you will need to add the entire 0.5 milliliter of the reagent in the dropper to the T column. Make sure you dispense all the reagent in the dropper. Using the stirring rod, stir both columns, then look at the dots again. If the dot at the bottom of the T column is less fuzzy than the dot at the bottom of the S column, shake the standard turbidity reagent and collect another 0.5 milliliters in the dropper. Add the entire 0.5 milliliter to the T column, stir both columns, and observe the black dots. Continue this process of adding 0.5 milliliters of the reagent to the T column until the dots in the both columns appear to have the same fuzziness or clarity. You will need to know how many additions you add to the control column, so don't forget to count. 
Once you fill the dots at the bottom of the T and S column have the same clarity, or in other words that you have reached the titration endpoint, add one more 0.5 milliliter addition. If the last addition causes the dot at the bottom of the T column to be fuzzier than the S column, it confirms that the previous addition was the endpoint. Record the number of the 0.5 milliliter additions you added to the control, not counting the last addition. You will notice on your data sheet that to calculate turbidity in JTUs, you need to multiply the number of additions by 5 if using a 50 milliliter sample. On your data form, you will notice that you also have the option of multiplying by 10 if using a 25 milliliter sample. In some rare cases, it is possible that the dot at the bottom of the S column is still not visible after reducing the volume to 25 milliliters. If this happens, record the turbidity as THTM or too high to measure in the comment section of your data form. In some cases, your 50 milliliter water sample might be so clear that the dots at the bottom of T and S columns are equal before, before adding the standard turbidity reagent. In this case, you should still add one addition of 0.5 milliliters to confirm that this is the case. If the T column is fuzzier than the sample after one addition, you should not count the addition. On your data form, report the number of measured additions as zero and report JTUs equal two. This is because it is very unlikely for a natural water body to have zero turbidity. Also, the detection level for turbidity that is possible with this test is limited. Thus, reporting two JTUs for a zero reading compensates for this fact.